on video and select rename to rename yourself on a Mac. Click on your own video and select rename. You can have your name be your the city that you're in, the job title that you're seeking, something else so that your name is not prominently displayed when you are featured on the live stream. Now, if you want to participate, make sure that your name is there because the enhanced visibility that you receive on the live stream could be very beneficial. Brenda. There you go. Look, it was like perfectly timed, it, almost as if Christopher and I had rehearsed that and he had practiced it. And no, he's just good. He is that good. And I want to welcome all of you and thank you so much for joining. I'm going to stop the screen share so I can see your lovely faces. I love when people do turn their video on because they have the chance to see you and get to know you. Um, if you feel comfortable putting your video on, I'd love it for you to have your video on. If you don't feel comfortable, that is okay. If you are not feeling camera ready, that is okay. You don't have to have your video on. Just some quick housekeeping before we get started. If you could please mute yourself and keep yourself on mute for the duration of the call, unless we call on you. We're in a Zoom meeting, which does allow, and I do allow everyone to unmute themselves. Uh, I don't want to sna snap hands and say, you got to mute yourself. I don't want to like mute you. So I would prefer that you do that. But every once in a while, someone will come on and not realize that they have their, their thing unmuted and they're talking. Or, you know, every now and again, we have people talking over others and then I have to mute everyone. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be the mom of the group, if that makes sense. I'd rather just be like a host today and, and, you know, keep us all going here. So just some housekeeping there. Do keep yourself on mute if you could. As we're going throughout the session, if you'd like to contribute to the conversation, if you have a question, if you have a resource or something that you'd like to share as the conversation's kind of weaving its way through, please use the raise hand function. And let me just show you, we're, we're gonna do this all together right now. I just wanna practice to make sure that you all know how to do this. So if you go down to your Zoom menu at the bottom, the bottom of your screen, if you hover over with your mouse, you're gonna see a Zoom menu appearing and you should see one saying reactions. I want you to go into that right now and click on raise hand. And you can see when you click on the raise hand, it will stay up there until you click on lower hand. Like Gary has the thumbs up. Now, Gary, the thumbs up is only gonna go up for a couple seconds and then it's gonna go away. So it's a little bit tricky. That's why I wanna practice this right now with all of you. You're gonna go into that reactions menu and there's a little button at the bottom that on mine, it says raise hand and it will stay up until I click on lower hand. So this is, this is just like in the classroom. Remember in elementary school, the teacher would say, raise your hand if you have a question or if you wanna be called on. It works here because really inside a Zoom session, only one person can be speaking at a time. Now we can have more than one speaking, but then you get a lot of noise and jumble and people are gonna get confused and they're gonna leave and don't do that. We wanna keep people on the call. All right, so if you figured out how to do that, now I want you to click on lower hand because I want you to know how to lower it as well because I will use the raise hand function to help to facilitate the call, okay? As we are getting started, I'm going to start with asking each of my VIP all-stars to introduce themselves. These are individuals who I have hand-selected, invited, tapped on the shoulder, or perhaps voluntold that they are going to be helping out with questions and with the meeting. Um, I'm going to go through and ask each of those individuals to introduce themselves. We're going to go in this order, and you need to keep track of the order because you all know that I forget the order I tell you to do these things in. Okay, so it's going to be Christopher Johnson, followed by Kenneth Lang followed by, I'm going down the list, raise your hand if I'm an all-star and I haven't seen you yet. Joey Himmelfarb will be next, followed by Jude. Hey, Jude. I had to do it. I haven't done it in a while. Jude will be after that. And then let's see who else we have on. I think that may be it. If I've missed you. Oh, Mindy. Thank you, Mindy. Raise your hand. She did what I said because I sometimes skim through so quickly. So Mindy, you will finish us off. All right, Christopher, you'll go first and let's see if everyone remembered their order. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brenda. My name is Christopher Johnson. The name of my company is Calm Clear Communications. I help speakers, trainers, and coaches produce engaging virtual events. How do I do that? I take away the tech headache and make everyone relaxed and comfortable in that environment. If you are looking for someone to help you with your virtual event, let me know. Let me know if I can be of help. I will pay place my information in the chat under the guidelines that Brenda has set up so that it will be easy to connect. And next is Ken Lang. Kenneth Lang, as, as Brenda would say, 
Um, hi, everyone. I appreciate it. Uh, sorry I was uh, not here last week. I was actually starting a new opportunity. I'm a, at Lee Heck Harris and now as a, a branding specialist, which is what I've been doing now, working with uh, people in outplacement on the resumes, on the LinkedIn profiles. Um, I love being here, seeing all the smiling faces. I love getting a chance to share my knowledge here. Brenda, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, feel free to connect with me. I'll be putting my, uh, my LinkedIn URL in the chat. Have a great day, everyone. I hope you can stick around to see Jude and I. We're going to be chatting on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. And so I'm going to turn it over uh, to my fellow Jersey and Joey Himmelfarb, who I hope to see at some point in Wayne, New Jersey. Thank you, Kenneth. Appreciate it very much. Good morning, all. So I'm Joey Himmelfarb. I'm a retired salesperson. Did it for about 25, 30 years. In that time, I also managed uh, to counsel and coach and guide and influence many, many unemployed professionals. And through all those experiences, I put together a book. I wrote it. I came out several months ago, gotten great reviews on it. And uh, I joined these calls because I want to help continue to help people that are looking for work. And uh, I will be on the sidelines just listening. If I hear you going down a rat's hole, I will come online and I will smack you across the face and get you in a good mood in the spirit of friendship. <laughs> uh, off to Jude. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> it's it's great following Joey because he he just brightens everything up <laughs> um, and adds humor to the um, sometimes very serious topic of job search. Um, my name is Jude Gall. I am um, a resume writer. My company is called Resume Redux, and I help people with uh, resumes, uh, job search, LinkedIn. Uh, and interview skills. Basically, anything to do with job search, um, I help people with. Um, I love job search. I'm one of those weirdos that really likes writing resumes and cover letters and coming up with strategies and, um, you know, helping people polish their interview skills. Um, and also uh, doing a very targeted job search, which is what Kenneth and I will be talking about. Uh, on Tuesday, the 14th. So um, I'm looking forward to the questions that you have for us. And I'm going to pass it off to Cindy. Thank you. Thank you, Jude. Uh, love to be in the company of all these fabulous people who are very happy to help you. Um, I'm a career coach. I love to accelerate people's careers and whatever that takes, that's what I do. Uh, I also am honored to be the host of a group called the Accelerators. We've been in and uh, we've had a LinkedIn group since the beginning of COVID, and we help job seekers with their uh, strategies, with learning, with education. And each month I bring out a, um, a wonderful guest speaker. This coming up in April, we have Virginia uh, Franco, who's a um, resume expert, as many of us are on this call. Um, and if you ever wanted to just ask a couple of questions of a resume expert, that's your opportunity. I'm going to drop the link to register. That's April 4th into the chat so you can register for that. That's a free Zoom call. Uh, we do them uh, once a month. So you're welcome to join. I think that uh, knowledge is power. The more you know, the more you can grow. And um, that's what I'm all about. So love to be here and help answer any questions. I think we did a pretty good job. I think we got through everyone. If there's anyone else who I, I have designated as an all-star and you have not introduced yourself, please use the raise hand function to help me out just like Mindy did, because sometimes I skip, skim through the list and I don't see you and I don't want you to feel like I'm forgetting about you. It's, it's not intentional. Sometimes it is just an oversight. And if you've been on these calls for a while, you know that I say that I never make mistakes. I have learning experiences sometimes. I'm sure you all have learning experiences too. And I want to make sure I'm being respectful to the audience. So welcome and good morning. I am delighted to see all of you on the call here today. I know there might be a few of you that are like, I don't want to be on this call because if you're on the call, it means that you are unemployed, out of work, in between successes, in career transition, underemployed, or any other of those fancy corporate sounding words that mean you're not working right now. But I want you to know that this is a place that you can come to every Friday from 10 to 11. 
And I want you to look around the room because this is your team. I want you to think about that. You know, you used to work for an organization where you were part of a team, part of a department. And it's really weird how like one day it's really part of your entire being, your, your, your individuality, you're part of that team. And the next day you're not. And it's really, I, I feel like in so many ways it's devastating. Um, it can be emotionally, you know, you know, it's like we need therapy after we go through a career transition, not by choice, I feel like sometimes. And I want this call to be a little bit of your therapy, but I really want it to be a place where you can surround yourself with people who are going to be supportive, who are going to be understanding, who are going to lift you up. People like Joey, who are going to kick you in the butt a little bit when you need it. And I'll, I'll even be direct with you when I um, give you some feedback. I'll always ask for permission. Is it okay if I'm direct with you on your profile, for example? And by the way, if you're just meeting me, my name is Brenda Meller. My company is Meller Marketing, and I help business professionals get a bigger slice of the LinkedIn pie. I do serve the business community, uh, business executives, team trainings, things like that. But I also work with the job seeker community partially because I've been uh, in your seat myself. I, I know how that feels to be in career transition. And um, I started these calls actually during the beginning of the pandemic, I think it was back in like April of 2020, if I'm not mistaken. We've been doing these just about every week since, missing some holidays here and there. But part of the reason I do this is because I want you to have a place that you can come to week after week where um, if if you need you know, some advice on your job search, if you're looking for inspiration, if you have a success story that you wanna share, you have a place where you can share those. And I wanna just look through this list and see who's on the call with us. I'm gonna say good morning to each of you. Good morning to Julia, Joey, Jude, Kenneth, Mindy, Al, Alan, Angela, Athena, Christopher, Dan, David B, David M and David S. Dean, Debbie, Gary, Janelle, Jean, Jeff, Jennifer, Jerry, Joan, John, Jonathan, um, Jorge, Juan, Katie, Kelly, Carrie, Kevin, Christine, Laura, Lena, Lillian, Lisa, Mary Beth, Nancy, nice to see you again, Noel, Randy, Rebecca, Santina, welcome back, Scott, uh, Simeon, Stuart, VF. The, uh, job. Oh, we got, we need to mute yourself. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't mute and you get a phone. Maybe there was a, a, a hiring manager calling for an interview, right? We've got Stuart, nice to see you. VF, Vic the Pie Man, Wendy, um, Mary, it looks like Mary may have dialed in and joined my laptop because you're you're twice as nice for us here on the call. And Shelly. And I see a few folks that are messaging me right now saying, I can't find the link. I want to remind everyone, if you are trying to get into this um, this call and you cannot find the link, well, let me just get out of my thing in the background here. Do you all remember where you're supposed to go? You're supposed to go, we're going to meet at the flagpole down the street. You remember where that is? That is our private unlisted LinkedIn group. I'm going to drop that link into chat right now as a reminder for all of you, and I'm navigating to it so you can see how I get there. I go under the work waffle. It's a little icon at your top of your link. It looks like a waffle, doesn't it? I click on groups and then I see VIP job seeker resources by Miller Marketing, probably at the top for me because I'm pretty much in here uh, just about every day. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this link into chat right now. So if you're ever in a situation where you can't find the link to come into the Friday calls, go into here. You're going to see Julia will have already dropped the link in there for you. So you can find that link and you can come inside the phone call. Um, if you send me an email or if you message me on LinkedIn, if I already started, there's a good chance I'm not going to see it. And I don't want you to feel like I don't care about you. I do care about you, but I also owe it to the group to keep the group, the call going and not be sidetracked on that um, check and stuff. So just want to remind you, go to the group. When you come to the group, this is a private unlisted group. Um, private means it's uh, all the activity that occurs inside the group is only visible by group members. Okay. So nobody else can see it. And then Unlisted means it's not in the group's directory, so you're not going to be able to find it unless I give you the link to come in. When you come to the group, you're going to see a little button that will say request to join because you got to kind of knock on the door and I'm going to look through the peephole, see who you are and make sure that you are in here for the right reasons. And when I say for the right reasons, I mean that you are a job seeker who is looking to network with other job seekers, or you are one of the individuals who I deem to be a trusted resource to the job seeking community that I feel comfortable having come in. I'm keeping the wrong people out as if that is, makes sense for you. Okay. And by the way, when you come inside here, you can certainly network with and meet other group members. If you click on show all, you're going to see all 825 individuals who are part of the group. As you scroll down the list, look next to their name. If it says first, 
that means you're already connected with them. And if you see someone that says second or third, it means you have not like Isabel for me is a second. So I might want to connect with her. All right. So what are we going to do today? Do you ever wonder you get on these calls? You're like, what's she going to do with the call today? Right? Sometimes it's the same. Sometimes I mix it up. Um, I'm going to mix it up a little bit today. And we're going to talk about self-care during your job search today. That's going to be our theme. Um, and a couple reasons I want to do this. I, I uh, started watching This Is Us again. And, and one of my former interns got me this coffee mug. This is a line from the movie. The doctor, the old doctor says, I don't know if you remember in the beginning of the movie, he delivers the kids, but he says, there's no lemon so sour that you can't resemble, that you can't make something resembling lemonade. And this is us is like a self-care series for me. I've watched it probably, it's probably my third time right now, maybe second, I'm not sure, but I know what's going to happen, but I love the journey I go on when I'm watching this is us. And I watch an episode or two every day. Um, you know, we're, we're here in Michigan and the winters feels like it's gone on long enough. I'm just going to go ahead and say it like it is. If you're in Michigan in the Metro Detroit area right now, you're probably experiencing the same snowfall we're having here. Uh, I'm in Macomb County and uh, I was out walking the dog this morning and it is frigid flipping cold out there, you guys. And I am, I'm, it's beautiful. It's beautiful on the trees and everything. And I'm glad I don't have to drive. And I'm glad I don't have to go to work, but it's like enough already. We had such a mild winter, didn't we? Up until February. And then it was like, winter is like, all right, well, let's go ahead and get started. And here we are like March 10th. And it's like, just keeps coming down and coming down. So um, when you are in career transition, you may also find yourself in this emotional roller coaster. In the beginning, it's, it's kind of like almost like the stages of grief, right? Like you're in shock and denial, and then, then you go through anger. I don't know if you know the stages of grief, if you do go ahead and put them in chat. But when you think about the stages of grief, it's very similar to the stages you go through as a job seeker in career transition, but it's not linear. It's kind of like it goes this way and then it goes back and then it goes here again and you're happy, you you go to acceptance and then you go back to anger again and then you go into the bargaining phase and it, you kind of go around and that does play with your, your mind and it plays with your heart a little bit and you can get into the funk. You know what I'm talking about? That dark place that you're like, you can't quite get yourself knocked out of. I don't want anyone to feel like they can't get out of the funk. Um, I, I created this group because when you are in career transition, it can be very isolating. You can feel like you're alone. You can kind of feel like you're on the outside looking in or a little bit like you're looking at everything happening around you. Um, and it feels very surreal, right? And I don't want you to feel like you're alone in this process. I want you to look around the room because there are 53 other individuals who are in a very similar situation to you right now. And we can help each other and we can support each other and we can lift each other up. And we can give each other self-care techniques and things to work on. I want you, and I see all the chats lighting up right now. We're going to have a very active chat, which is awesome. I want you to go into chat right now and share with us a self-care technique that you can do while in career transition. For example, I got a little home frothy coffee maker thing and I made some, I don't know if you can see the foam at the top of my cup. I just spilled my coffee in front of me. Great. But um, I made a coffee and I did a little latte foam on top of it this morning. And the, the foam thing, it costs... I don't know if it was like 20 or 30 bucks. It was at Target. Um, it's cheaper than going to get a Starbucks every day. But then I put a coffee and I make a little latte and sprinkle a little cinnamon. That's a little bit of self-care for me because I love my coffee. I love my special treats and things like that. So that's that's an example of something you can do for self-care, giving yourself something that is enjoyable, whether it is a food or a beverage or things like that. Um, some people enjoy jigsaw puzzles. I have a jigsaw puzzle on my table in the background. I hate the one I'm working on right now, but I'm going to get it done. I'm going to figure it out. Um, that's a form of self-care for me. Some people doing yoga or working out um, with a friend or solo, you know, that's self-care. Sometimes petting your dog or you're petting your cat. If you have a pet, that's a form of self-care. And I see inside chat, it's really lighting up right now with a lot of different ideas on self-care. And I honestly, none of these are related to job search. And I think that's important to think about when you're in job search. And we all know you should be treating your job search as a full-time job, really a 40 hour a week process, but you do need to give yourself permission to do things that are non-job search related because you need to have balance in on the process. Um, the job search is a roller coaster, isn't it? And, you know, a lot of times I talk about the black hole of job search, this, this, this void, right. That you apply to job upon job, upon job, upon job, and you don't hear much back. Maybe you get an automated email, maybe not, maybe a form email. 
And it feels like it's just soul sucking and soul crushing. And it kind of feels like it's the only thing you can do. You, you're at the mercy of the system. Does that make sense? Um, I don't like the black hole of job search. And part of uh, another part of the reasons I started these calls is to give people a different way to approach their job search and help to empower you to think about using LinkedIn for your job search. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking at some great things online. I see playing Scrabble online, going for a walk outside, um, getting ice cream. David, I love all of your suggestions here. Pie, that may, I think if you like pie, you could eat some pie, playing Wordle, reading, uh, walking outside. I've heard, I see a lot of that. And I have heard that even during really bad weather, you should try to get outside at least once a day. They, there's studies that have shown that if you are acclimating your body to the climate and the temperature that you're in, that helps to stabilize your mood. It, it does help with that. So even if you have, I mean, I just like, you learn to bundle up. Do I need to put like one hat plus another hood in a scarf, or is it just a one hat you know, headband kind of day. Like I need to figure that out before going on. But as long as you bundle up enough, you'll be fine getting outside, even if it's in the frigid cold. And if you're in a very hot climate, it's kind of like you either need to go out um, in the beginning of the day or the end of the day when the, or even maybe after the rain, right? When the weather is breaking. Manicure, Kate, I need to get a manicure. My nails are getting kind of, I need to, I don't know if I'm going to do that at home or not, but um, getting a manicure, going to the gym, surrounding yourself with a supportive network. Mindy, great idea there. Uh, daily meditation. And Christopher mentioned that I know there's some meditation apps. If anyone uses a meditation app, drop it inside chat right now. If you could, um, I see someone, the five stages of grief. Thank you, Jude denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Let me say those again and think about your job search denial. Yep. Anger. Oh yeah. Right. Bargaining. Yeah. Maybe when it comes to like the separation agreement, depression. Oh yeah. The whirly whoops of those things that are happening. And then acceptance. I hope that you are all into the acceptance phase of thing, but do know that you may pull back into some of the other phases as you're going through your job search. And that's perfectly normal. Um, allow yourself to be in the dark space. If you're feeling like you're being sucked into there, but just don't, don't get stuck. What was that one movie? Was it the never ending story where they were in like the pit like the sand, sand pit and they couldn't get out. And it was, it reminds you of depression right? If you're feeling like you're getting stuck and you can't get out, you need to ask for, for some help. And whether that's texting some friends and saying, Hey, can you meet for coffee? Can we get together for lunch? Or just texting someone else to say, Hey, check in and how are things going? Don't let yourself get into that deep, dark place for too long. Right. I want to make sure you can get out of there. Um, I was talking to someone once and, uh, she was, she was saying that her career was prompted in part by someone who had lost his job and taken his life because um, he just was in that that place that he didn't know how to get out of. And he didn't feel he, like he had any supporter. And it really touched me. I'm like, I don't want anyone to ever feel like that. There are so many wonderful people that are a part of the community that we've created. By the way, use the introductions to connect to these people. And when you have put your introduction into chat, hopefully you have included your LinkedIn URL. We can visit your profile, mention that we saw you inside the group here. We've even had some folks that have formed accountability partners as a part of the call. What does that mean? You just kind of agree to meet once a week, either on a Zoom or by phone for 15 minutes or a half hour, whatever you want to do, and just check in. What's one personal goal you have for the week and one professional goal? How did you do against them? If you know you have somebody who's checking in with you, you're more likely to get those things done, right? And it's a great way to, to create some friendships within the group as well. All right. Um, I want to see if anyone from the group has any thoughts on self-care that they would like to share. If you do, please use the raise hand. Remember that little raise hand thing that we had earlier, whether you're one of the all-stars or somebody within the group, if you have any thoughts on self-care or techniques you'd like to share with people or favorite apps, please raise your hand. It will allow me time to sip my coffee. If someone raises their hand, Dan, thank you. All right, Dan, go ahead and unmute yourself if you could. So I learned a, uh, a series of skills. It's called tip. Who here has heard of TIP, TIP, anyone? So the T is temperature, and this may sound ridiculous, and you're probably not going to be able to do it where you're at, but I would abbreviate it and, and uh, mold it to how you are able to. I learned to dunk, this is, sounds silly, really silly, dunk your, head, dunk your he head in ice cold water and hold your breath for it's said about 30 seconds. I can't do 30 seconds. But what I do do 
is I take like a, a towel or a paper towel or something, and I douse with, with cold, a cold, really super cold towel, and I put it up along the uh, back of my neck or over my head, and it it's uh, scientifically proven that it actually physiologically changes your mood. Uh, so that's the temperature. Uh, the eye is, is intense exercise. We talked about walking, and then P paired muscle. Uh, relaxation so like up and down with the shoulders and just you know like wiggle your fingers and your toes and just like let it all out like we sometimes do here in, in the room so those are three skills in one to try to boost your mood that's awesome thank you for sharing that dan we appreciate it thank you dan all right mindy i see that your hand is raised as well mindy what do you have to share with us Okay, mine is very, very simple to do. And you can do this anytime, any place. I'm gonna just lower my screen a little bit so you can see, but I think you should try it while I'm doing it. You're gonna take your right hand, cross it over your heart and put it on your sh left shoulder and do the same thing with your left hand. You, this is what's called a heart hug. You can do this to yourself. If you don't have someone to pat you on the shoulder and saying you're doing an awesome job or you're fabulous today, you can hug yourself. The heart is the center of all of your energy. And when you do this, you really encourage yourself to start thinking about good thoughts. So if you need to get yourself out of a bad thought, give yourself a heart hug. Easy to remember. I do this sometimes when I'm falling asleep and I, my brain is going crazy. I give myself a little heart hug. You did a good job today, Mindy. I'm proud of you. And then I fall asleep. Oh. I like it when we do like hands-on stuff in the group here. So thank you for, for that demonstration. I'm going to jump in because I think that's also the um, sign language for love, isn't it? Might be. Not sure. That's right. very calming. Any, anyone else from the group have anything they'd like to share about self-care tips, techniques, you know, anything? And feel free to raise your hand. Don't be shy. This is what the group is all about. Randy, I see your hand is raised. Go ahead. I haven't done this. I did it once. My friend told me about it. I don't know. It didn't catch on with me, but I could see how it work. It's similar to just walking outside. <clears throat> she puts a baggie full of ice cubes in her freezer. And whenever she's feeling down, she takes it out and puts it, oh, on her chest. But I'm sure it would be the same difference if you put it on your forehead. So again, that's to the point of temperature. I like it. Thank you, Randy. Um, great tip. Becky, how about you? Did you, I see your hand raised? Yes, Was it raised? Hi. Great to be here for a little bit. Um, I use applied kinesiology or I use kinesiology and I don't know if anybody's brought that up. So sorry, cause I was in another meeting just, um, but you can look it up and it's called brain gym, sort of like the common vernacular. So look up brain gym. And I learned this stuff like a million years ago since I am that old. And what it does is it connects both hemispheres of your brain. So I use this when I start group sessions and I say, hey, you know, in order for us to really maximize our time, let's make sure both hemispheres of our brain are connected so we can access both right and left brain. So, you know, do a few of those, the crisscross, the whatever. And like I said, um, I just found it listed as brain gym because, you know, I didn't really have to look it up. But when I tell people, I got to tell them what to find. Thank you for sharing that, Becky. Great tip. Um, Jude, I see your hand raised. And Randy, I'm not sure if your hand was raised again or not. If, you, if you're done, pull your hand back down. If you could like lower your hand, but if you have something else, we'll keep you going. But Jude, go ahead. You'll be next. Um, so one of the things that I really like to do is um, dance to music. So, you know, put on, ha have like, uh, I don't know, a list of your three favorite songs or go on to YouTube and if you're, you know, if you grew up in the 80s or the 90s, <laughs> you can find playlists and uh, just dance for 15 minutes. And I guarantee you, you'll be energized and you'll be happy <laughs> and you'll be raring to go. So that's that's a great self-care tip that I, I use often. <laughs> I like it. That reminds me of the show Grey's Anatomy. And I remember like Meredith and Christine would like, they'd be like super stressed out about something and they'd go in the, the break room and they'd like jam on the music and, and dance. So you remind me of that show. 
Um, Randy, did you have something else to share? I did. Um, yeah, we, I, I forgot to say about breathing exercises. Uh, I forget if I use the five, five, seven, or, you know, for breathing in, breathing out, holding it in. But that, and then watching a funny movie, like on Netflix or something, uh, that helps me. And an occasional, I don't do this again, but I'm not such a big drinker, but an occasional glass of wine. Yes, Nancy, gin for Nancy um, is okay, I think. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah you know, you got to have your vices and everything with moderation, of course. I just found something I'm going to share up on screen and we're going to going to do this together. This is the box breathing technique. You don't need to unmute yourself for this. Are you guys seeing this up on screen, the green box right now? Okay, good. So I had to do a quick Google search for it. Um, and we're going to, we're going to shift gears and talk about LinkedIn for job search. We'll look at some profiles next. We'll look at some questions and success stories too, but I thought this might be a good thing um, to get us all into uh, a good mind space and just a little reminder of, of an activity that you can do. So it's called box breathing and you can see on here what you're supposed to do. So you breathe in for four seconds. You hold it for four seconds. What I said. And then you breathe out for four seconds. I'm trying to watch the timer as I'm doing it. I don't know if I got it exactly right, but I feel like after I've done that just with one set, I already feel a little bit more relaxed. I don't know if you feel the same way or not. Um, I will drop that link into chat. You can do a Google search for box breathing techniques, but it's something really easy that you can do. Um, maybe before an interview, when you're having a lot of anxiety, maybe right after the interview, when you're having a lot of anxiety, that happens too. You're like, you replay everything. What if I, what did I say? What did I do? What did I, right. Um, or anytime you're, you're having, um, you know, anxiety or you're feeling in that funk, try that technique. It just kind of resets. I think your whole physiology really, because it, it calms you and, and, and gets some fresh breath in your lungs and everything too. All right. So hopefully you enjoy that. Um, I may try to incorporate some different themes in our calls moving forward just to keep you on your toes and mix up the variety of things that we do here. Normally what we do is after the all-stars introduce themselves, we go into success stories and Q and A, and then we may have some time for profile reviews as well. What I'd like to do now is ask you if you have a success story to share, I want you to put the word success in all caps in chats, just like I did right now, just the word success and then raise your hand. So remember going down to the bottom of your zoom menu, you want to click on the raise hand. So type in the word success and then click on raise hand because it'll be, uh, makes it easier for us to see you to, to pull you up on there. All right. So Lena, Lisa is going to be going up to you. Okay. And then if you have a question, I want you to type in the word question in all caps, followed by typing out the question. Um, so I'm just going to say, is it snowing where you are as an example of a question? Because if we don't have time to get through all of your questions, there will be people who will see it inside chat and they can either reply right under that question or they can direct message you or they may message you afterwards. So I want people to give the chance, give you the chance to get your questions answered, even if we can't get through you on the call here today. So do question, type it the full question and then raise your hand if you could using that Zoom function so we can call on you and get your questions answered. All right, so we're going to go um, success stories first. I see three of them inside here. We're going to go Lena, then Lisa, and then Kevin. So Lena, what's your success story for us? Um, so I did get a job offer yesterday, um, which is exciting, but I'm also a little bit on the fence about it. It's like this very small healthcare company, and uh, the hiring manager actually found me from a LinkedIn post that I was able to write because of this meeting. So um, that was very helpful. Um, so I'm, it's like kind of interesting because she said I could work either part-time or full-time and it's a contract position. So um, I wouldn't have like benefits. So I'm probably gonna still look, I think, while I have this job because um, it doesn't sound like fully like concrete. So I'm happy that I have a job, but still kind of looking also. Okay. So I'm going to pause here before we move on. And I want to see if any of the all-stars have any advice or questions for Lena based on this scenario. It sounds like she has a job offer. 
it's contract, um, part, possibly part-time, possibly full-time. Lena, did you say, is there any possibility it could turn into a full-time position or is that not a possibility? Yeah, they told me um, like around the end of June that there's a possibility of either extending the contract or a direct hire if that opens up. Okay. All right. So I see Joey raised his hand and Jude raised their hand. So Joey, what questions or advice do you have for Lena? So it's not so much of us. Congratulations, Lena. That's great. But it's, it's more so for everybody on the call. Lena said that she posted on LinkedIn and somebody found her. And, you know, Brenda has beat this up, beat us up with this every, every time she talks to us. There's no reason you can't post on LinkedIn. And if, if you don't post, no one's going to find you. Not guaranteeing that they'll find you if you post, but if you don't, they won't. So it's a great example of getting out there and putting yourself out there and who knows what's going to come of it. So congratulations, Lena. Lena, as a follow-up to that, do you know what the post was about? Did they mention what it was or? So she commented on the post and that's like how we connected. And the post was about um, me just like leaving my position and then giving a background on what I was looking for and what my skills were. Um, so. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, part of the reason I asked the question is I wanted to kind of like figure out what was it in the post that prompted the visibility for you? And there's, there's probably a handful of individuals who are in career transition, job seeking unemployed right now that are like, there's no way I'm going to talk about that on LinkedIn in a post. And I want to challenge you. If that's you right now, if you had that immediate reaction saying, I would never do that, I'm going to challenge you. You're on today's call because you're looking for additional insights. You're here for inspiration. Hopefully um, you're, you're looking for, how do I get a job, right? So part of it is letting the world know that you're looking for a job and you can do this in a very positive way. And I want you to think about mm -hmm. the fact that somebody out there may have a position for you, maybe hiring, just like the hiring manager that saw Lena. If Lena didn't post, she wouldn't be sharing the success story with us. So if you're thinking about what to post about, if you're in career transition, here's my guidelines for you. You want to be positive, you want to be specific, and you want to include a call to action. So positive, you're kind of letting people know that you are in career transition, looking for your next full-time opportunity, okay? You don't have to do the whole backstory, the what happened to you, the bashing of your employee. You don't do any of that. Just letting people know, you're letting them know, I'm currently in career transition, looking for my next full-time position. Be specific about what you're looking for. I'll take anything is not specific. You want to tell people, I am looking for a project manager position in Metro Detroit or whatever your job title is in your specific geographic area. Now, if you're open to remote, you can say that. Project manager position based in Metro Detroit or fully remote, you can tell them that. And then the call to action is what do you want people to do next? You could say comment below if you're aware of anything. You can say reach out if you're open to a virtual coffee. You can say direct message me if you're open to chatting. So give them some way of getting a hold of you. Or you can say connect with me on LinkedIn. But let's be specific. Thinking about Lena's scenario, if she didn't tell people that she was looking, that recruiter, that hiring manager wouldn't have seen it. So thank you, Lena, for sharing that. And I hope I'm giving somebody on the call an inspiration to, to actually try one of those announcement posts. All right, I'm going to move off of Joey and on to Jude. Jude, did you have uh, questions, advice, or, or what would you like to share? Uh, so congratulations, Lena. That's fantastic. Um, so um, because there's is an opportunity for the position to become full-time. Um, I would um, make a list of goals for myself um, to demonstrate that I would be a great hire for uh, the company when June comes around and they're in a position to hire. Um, the other thing that I would do is to keep my eyes and ears open for other opportunities because it is a contract and uh, you want to be able to um, um, pivot uh, quickly if that does happen. And, and, and if, you know, if it's going to continue to be a, a part-time position, uh, part-time contract position or a full-time contract, you want to be able to pivot quickly. So keep a, a, a track of all your wins, big and small, during your work here and keep networking and keep posting on LinkedIn. Keep posting about your skills and what you've done um, in your previous jobs that have uh, produced results for the organizations you've worked for. 
Awesome. That, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Great. Mindy, I saw you had raised your hand too. Thank you so much, Jude, by the way. Appreciate that. Mindy, what do you have to share? Oh, Mindy's muted. I'm, I'm good now. Okay. Um, congratulations, Lena. So what you're doing is exactly what I would recommend. Definitely take any consulting roles that you're offered because you never know when A, you will be offered a full-time role, right? Or B, you're going to learn some new skills that you're going to be able to probably into your next role. Or you're going to meet some people there who have other op interesting opportunities for you. I encourage everyone to have that. If you have an opportunity to consult or do freelancing, that is a beautiful bridge to your next role, to your next pivot. And while you're there, remember to get recommendations from the people that you're helping, because that's really going to help you as you move into your next role, whatever that might be. And lots of times people forget to get recommendations. Just ask, you know, the worst thing that they can say is no. If you never ask, the answer is always no. So um, great move, Lena. Definitely take it and definitely keep looking for sure. All right, Lena, was that helpful for you? Oh, I see Jude raised her hand. Is Jude, did you want to add something more? Okay. All right. Was that helpful for you, Lena? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I was right. like a little hesitant about it, but like, yeah, talking through it, I feel okay. pretty good about it. Good. Well, good luck. I hope um, I hope you come to a conclusion that's that's best for you. And I don't know which that path will be for you, but hopefully we've got a couple of things to think about here. And I want to encourage the group too. If you have additional advice for Lena, feel free to reach out to her. Lena, would you mind dropping your LinkedIn URL in the chat one more time just for folks that are um, listening to it? Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, let's go on next. Lisa, you have a success story. I'm so excited. Lisa, what's going on? Don't, don't. I don't I be excited for you. I could be a little Thank excited. You. Right. No, it's really a, for me, it's a great success. I had an interview last last week. Um, I'm going into a different field, so I'm having a really hard time finding a job. But and I get great interviews, all that other stuff. So at the end, I I felt that they had an apprehension to one of the questions that they asked because I don't have specific, specific experience doing that. So I put a call into the VIP group. I put something on LinkedIn and got some really great responses. And I went onto Canva and I made a slideshow presentation, which I've never used Canva. It's a great tool. I did a presentation kind of, I, I basically said, I, I, I feel that there was some apprehension in one of the questions and this is how I would handle it. So I did a presentation on it and um, I'm going to send it today once I figure a few more things out, but yeah, I, I thought that would be at least they, they can see or, or hear, oh, she, she is thinking about it and this is what she would do to resolve it. So I thought that was yeah. kind of a cool thing. And is, it, is this, um, do you mind if I talk about what I think you're talking about is the, it's the position where they're looking for how do we recruit longer term, long, um, long-term volunteers. volunteers. Yes. And, um, I think that shows heck of a lot of initiative, Lisa. I, I mean, I think people are hiring for both your experience and your ability and your initiative. And I think, mm -hmm. especially in a nonprofit world, it's very focused on being um, passionate about the cause. And mm -hmm. if, if you can demonstrate that you've continually been thinking about this since the interview, it, it kind of demonstrates to them, there's going to be situations if they do hire you where you don't have the experience doing whatever it is they're asking, but you have the ability to learn from and to apply, you know, whether it's pulling from your network or pulling right. from resources, you can apply and create a plan to do something. I think that, that would impress the heck out of, of me, Lisa. And what I will share with you is even if this particular employer doesn't hire you, once you get done with that Canva, I would highly recommend that you create it. Uh, in Canva, there's a way that you can export it as a PDF. And mm -hmm. then if you do yeah. that, you can upload it into LinkedIn as a document and people can click through and Ooh. see it slide by side. So I would definitely, regardless if they hire you or not, make the Canva generic to recruiting nonprofit volunteers, post it on LinkedIn, and then remind people, if, you're, if you feel comfortable telling this publicly, remind people you are looking for your next position in nonprofit um, as a, you know, XYZ position, you know, in your area. I would absolutely because they don't get your advice for free. You merchandise the heck out of that, Lisa, for yourself. I would say. 
That's a great idea. Yeah. Yes. And I, I can use it for other things and I can adjust it, but that's perfect. I didn't yeah. think of that. Absolutely. And then when you do it as a PDF and you export it, that way, mm -hmm. when you upload it as a document post, people can click through and see all the little slides that are in there too. So yeah, okay. absolutely. I, I, I live for like at least one, one time on these calls every week for somebody going, that's a great idea. I never thought about that. So I kind of feel like, let me just get my bell here. Hold on a second. All right, there we go. <laughs> Got one for the day. All right. So Lisa, can else? you remind, can you remind us, you said that you use a lot of music in the very beginning of your Yes. Of, of this group. So where, where did you go again? So I go to YouTube and I type in, I'm going to put it in chat right now. Okay. Um, I literally type in, um, instrumental music royalty free. And then depending on my mood, I might put in energetic or, you know, calm or something. I might put in like one more keyword with it, but the instrumental, okay. it takes out people singing royalty mm -hmm. free means if it does appear on YouTube or on social media, I'm not going to get dinged with like licensing, um, okay. things like that, but that's what I put in there. I think I'm going to try and add some music to it. Awesome. That's, that's cool. Great. And inside <laughs> Canva, there's actually a way Canva has like a music library that you can choose from. Okay. So uh, you can, you can always Google how to add music to a Canva project. And I will. Thing in I there. definitely will. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Thank All right. You. Thank you so much, Lisa. All right. Um, were there, Julia, were there any other questions or success stories that you are seeing inside chat? By the way, Julia is my intern. She's helping out in the background. Julia, do you see anyone yeah. else? Uh, next was Kevin Kane with a success story. All right, Kevin, what's going on with you, sir? Can you talk? Kevin? Paging Kevin. Kevin, please come to the front of the room. Kevin may not be able to unmute himself right now. I'm going to ask one more time. Kevin, you're next on The Price is Right. Can you come down to the showcase showdown? No. Okay. So we'll come back to you, Kevin. Maybe he stepped away. Maybe he's not able to unmute himself. Julia, is there anyone else? Success story or question? Lillian with a success story. All right. Lillian, what's going on with you? Can you unmute yourself? Um, yeah, I unmuted myself. I actually, uh, I'm in a... Uh, Right now they're doing the background check. So um, they actually had a, two different offers. One came okay. first and they were doing the background check. And then a, a previous manager I worked with, she was interested in uh, getting some help. And we had talked a little bit before maybe doing a contract, but this, then she changed it to a full-time role. Oh, that's good. And um, so both of them were full-time role. I had already accepted the one and they were doing the background check, but they hadn't finished it. And this one with the manager, I just actually went to the location and, you know, and talked to her there and, and looked at it um, where I'd be located. And um, it's only 10 miles away from where I live. Okay. And great. Are you excited about this, Lillian? It's, I'm, I'm not yeah. feeling like the excitement vibe from you, but are you happy about this? Yeah, it, it was yeah. just... Um, kind of pressure because I was, you know, because I accepted one, I was just waiting. And then the second one came and then I wasn't sure, but I've worked with her for two and a half years. And um, she actually um, wanted me to pretty much to come back and work with her because she knows I'm, I was good at what I did. Okay. And okay. Um, so if they're doing the final background job, even though it's a smaller company and the benefits isn't as good, but they, they matched the pay and they, they, they gave me three weeks vacation plus PTO. Nice. Yeah. And the health benefits aren't as good, but I already got my health benefits. Okay. So the, the one thing I wanted to say, I did take contract positions before mm -hmm. and um, they, they, you know, some of them were bigger companies and, and some of them recognized them when I was interviewing. So they, it does help. Um, and getting more skills and a recommendation for the, the people uh, from those people, because a lot of them recognize other people if you stay in the same field. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been in the field for like, um, worked in the food industry for over 30 years. So I didn't think I was gonna get another job because, you know, age mm -hmm. discrimination and all that. And people are younger and they, they don't ask for much i wasn't even asking for much i just wanted to um get something to keep busy <laughs> yeah well, but, good. Um, well, 
So it sounds like uh, th this is a success story, Lillian. Did you have any questions for us or anything yeah, so, you'd like to share with fellow job seekers? Yeah, so I, 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 I'll, I'll tell you, um, I've been um, laid off uh, several times mm -hmm. and I kept looking and, uh, and this time I looked on LinkedIn a lot more mm -hmm. and I was yeah. very specific in the jobs I was looking for. So I did a lot of filtering. And because okay. I was targeting certain companies, not, not the companies themselves, but the position and getting the description down so it would be close to what I could do. I did get a lot of interviews, but, you know, they didn't pan out. Some of them, I even got second interviews. Okay. So, I mean, I looked and this time I didn't get as, I didn't like spend 40 hours a week looking. Lillian, I'm, I'm going to jump in if you don't mind, because we've got about 10 minutes left on the oh. call. Was there a specific question that we can? No, the, or no I was just saying that, that people yeah. give up and, and people don't. Um, yeah. No, it does get very frustrating not uh, getting interviews and stuff. That's all I was thinking. And I had a tough time, you know, you know, when I some weeks you didn't get anything some weeks. But yeah, I think the more specific you are, I think the better off we, we became. I just wasn't sure. Um, this this group actually helped me. Um, some of the things that you said was like more positive. Yeah, so it's like we, staying positive, right? Surrounding yourself yes. with positive people, getting active on LinkedIn. So thank you, you know, Lillian, for sharing that. I'm, so it sounds like you're moving forward with this job. You've accepted? Is that the case? I accepted it. But like oh, I said, they're finishing the, the background check, which sure. hopefully mm -hmm. there isn't anything... <laughs> And usually the background check is more of a formality, as long as you you know there's nothing in in that that's that's you know could be causing a hiccup in the process. It's really more of a formality, um, depending on the organization. But we look forward to seeing you. Uh, hopefully, announcing that on on LinkedIn, Lillian. And do keep in mind you're welcome to stay in this group if you're able to come on and join us on Fridays. And if you're not because you're back to work, um, that's always the goal too. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So Kevin said he did not have a question. Let me take Lillian off of here. Um, and I think there were one or two more questions, Julia, that did come in to chat. And then we'll we'll go to Randy and David after that. Julia, is there any other questions that were inside of chat or success mm -hmm. stories we have not gotten to yet? Yeah. Uh, next was Al Nunes with a question and Randy with a question. Okay. So Al, can you unmute yourself? Here. Hey. Just present. quick question <laughs> on, on hashtags, because um, we were talking about posting and actually a friend of mine, um, convinced me to work with him on some posts on this book that I've been reading about 50 ways to oh, find there a job. You go. Cool. Mm -hmm. So we've taken like a chapter every day and kind of posted something and I made my comments about my search. Um, and so like you were mentioning, but yeah. the hashtag piece is something that I'm not, I've not used that a lot. And so I'm like, I'm always wondering like, how is this beneficial? How does this work? Yeah. You know, I know a lot of people are using it. So I'm just curious about that. Okay, so I'm going to just address your question about, you know, how do you, how can you use hashtag for your job search, I think is the question, right? And I want to address like the very first question, like the biggest question I get asked about hashtags and keep in mind, like LinkedIn is what I do for a living. And I'm talking to people all the time, both job seekers and recruiters, hiring managers, sales teams. The biggest question I get asked from all of my clients is what's a hashtag, which still tells me that LinkedIn is just not as heavy of a hashtag using community as other groups are. Now, having said that, I'm going to explain to you what is a hashtag and how can it help you to differentiate yourself on LinkedIn. I'm going to point to my friend, Alexander. Um, he's one of my clients. He's started to use more hashtags in his posts. So when you do a hashtag, it's the pound symbol or the number sign, right? Followed by a single word or multiple words, but they're all strung together. No dashes, no spaces. And when you use it in a post and you click on it, um, let me just try this right now. LinkedIn's going a little bit slower. You'll see when you click on the post, you can see uh, how many people are following that hashtag. And when you follow a hashtag, you'll start to see more posts popping up in your homepage feed that are related to that keyword or phrase. And this one has 2,313 followers. If I scroll down right now, every post that will be in here, aside from the second one, which is promoted, that's an ad, by the way, Every post that will be in this feed will have that hashtag someplace inside it. Here it is, creator economy. You know, so if I am looking for more posts about a specific word, I can put that in, in a hashtag in a post. So let's say for me, because I have a marketing background, I want to use the word 
marketing in, in my post, the hashtag marketing in my post. Now this one has 20 million, 2,766. It's a lot of people following this. So hashtags can be used to help you to extend your reach to people that are following that keyword or phrase that are not yet connected to you and not yet following you. So for example, Corey Bray says second, I'm not following Corey. I'm not connected to, to Corey, but I'm seeing his post coming up in the homepage feed because I'm searching for the keyword marketing. So my advice to all of you as job seekers, if you're considering using hashtags, I wanna give you some general guidelines based on the LinkedIn algorithm and based on kind of best practices to help support your job search. The rule of thumb is that you should use three to eight hashtags. Eight is the maximum. I would say three to five is really what I aim for. And I try to use hashtags that are related to the content of the post or the expertise that I have to offer. So Al, can you remind me, what is your targeted job title? Director of admissions or recruitment. Okay. So I would use hashtag, and I'm assuming you're for colleges and, and universities, right. is that correct? So I would use hashtag admissions, hashtag college recruitment, because recruitment can be talent recruitment or other things like that. Yeah. And even if you type in, and I'm just going to do um, college recruitment, I'm going to type it into the search bar at the top because it already is uh, formatted for pulling up the searches in the hashtags. Let me just drive this in here. So I can see college recruitment only has 11 followers on here. What if I change it to university recruitment? Let me see if that changes it at all. Let me change it a little bit. We'll see on here. 36 followers, a couple more on here. So you could use hashtags that are related to that particular keyword. My, my little hack on this is in addition to that, look at and see one of the couple of the posts that other people are doing, and you're going to learn other hashtags that may be related to this specific keyword or the specific hashtag. Let me find a couple more of those. This one is Microsoft Life, so university recruitment. Okay, so Microsoft has a program where they are recruiting people from universities. Just one second. Um, you might want to think about not just working for colleges and universities, Al, but looking at organizations that are recruiting from college campuses too. There, there could be another. Yeah, I have looked at that. Um, so I have applied for jobs like that. So yeah. Okay, perfect. Someone had said, hey, Brenda, and I wanted yeah. to finish my thought. <laughs> Who was I, that? <laughs> it's, it's on this topic. Um, yeah. We can see the people, but we can't see the tags that you've been we can see your mouse clicking on stuff, but we don't see anything being displayed. You're not Please. seeing the URL at the top? I see it. We see the URL, but you're clicking on hashtags. Oh, look at this hashtag, 36. We don't see that. Oh, you're not, see okay, it. so at the top of the screen, you're not seeing university recruitment that says 36 followers? Nope. I'm not. I see it fine, Brenda. Yeah, I can I see, see it. it. I yeah. see okay. it. I wonder if it might be your screen, Dean, do you have your screen enlarged or? Yeah, I see you clicking on things, but not, uh, you know, and I see the list of people, but okay. okay. If everybody else is seeing it, then it's just me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so Al, does that help you in understanding? Yes. And yeah, it does. Yeah. So, as, yeah, so I'll start adding some things to my post and taking a look at that, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, perfect, great, thank you. All right, um, Julia, there was someone else after Al? Yeah, Randy. Randy. Hi. Thank you. I have two things actually. Uh, first of all, what hashtag would I use if I'm if I want to see uh, people posting in my feed about looking for my role, which is VP Business Development? So you're trying to find recruiters for sales positions. Is that correct? Correct. Specifically, uh, business yeah. development, but. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm just going to use as an example here, I'm going to put that back in here and I'm going to put sales jobs as an example. I'm going to use a pretty broad keyword in here. Give it a second to load. So I can see there's 7,500 people following this. Um, so this one is, you know, Joe is posting for a kitchen sales designer position. It looks like he might be in the UK because I see the dollar sign is not the dollar sign inside of here. I'm going to look at the bottom of a couple of these because I might find additional hashtags related to that. Now, this one's a little bit too broad in here. We are hiring 15 sales executives. So I would start with hashtag sales jobs and then look at other hashtags like sales executive jobs, perhaps. Um, you can start to get a little bit more specific 
you know, to geography, like you can look at Detroit jobs or things like that too. What I would also do in addition to hashtags, Randy, is searching for recruiters on LinkedIn, specializing in sales roles. So sales recruiters, you know, searching for people that using the keyword sales recruiter. Let me just get S in there, just do it as singular. And then I'm gonna click on the people tab. If I were you, um, Randy, I would try to connect with as many of these individuals as you can, um, because you wanna, you wanna get into their network. You don't wanna just find their posts. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. And the other thing is, uh, I know you mentioned earlier, I, and I, I know we all know that we should post more. And mm -hmm. I know um, that um, someone on the call posted about that they were looking for work. I'm shying away from that. I really don't prefer to do that. But what I've thought about recently and haven't done, and I've never seen anyone do it, so I want to get your opinion on it, is how about when you post an article mm -hmm. that at the bottom of it, you just write one line looking for a position as VP. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I've never seen you're that. you're talking about like the right article function, which is like the LinkedIn blog, right? Is what you're referring to when you're- I'm just saying, um, you know, a couple of times post. a week, I post articles that maybe someone else yeah. posted and I put and it on could, my page. Yeah, absolutely. At the bottom of the post, you can say, and by the way, keep, in, keep me in mind, I'm searching for a sales director position in Metro Detroit. Absolutely right. do that. Okay, yep. great. Thank did you. Did you, um, by the way, did you all, I don't know if anyone saw my post for today and we're a little bit over time. We're going to go a little bit longer here today, but I did a post today because I was at an inform event yesterday speaking and somebody asked the question, have you noticed like LinkedIn is starting to become more personal? There's more personal posts that are out there. And I, I was sharing the story. I'm like, yeah, you know, if I post a picture of me and my dog, I'll get a lot of engagement. But if I post, um, a reminder of booking me for LinkedIn team training, I won't get a lot of engagement. So sometimes what I do is I post a picture of me and my dog. And within the post, I will weave in a mention of my team training and the picture will grab their attention and then they'll start reading through there. And it is really, a, a, you know, the post is really about why do personal posts get a lot of engagement on LinkedIn? And I'm not like pulling back the curtain on the algorithm and everything, but I'm, I'm just kind of saying people enjoy seeing real people and non-business posts on here. A lot of people left Facebook, but they still want to have the social aspects. So they're starting to get more of those on LinkedIn. And there's a higher likelihood that people are going to comment on a post that's more personal in nature than if you were to post a sales related post. And, and you could apply that to the job seeking um, spectrum as well. You could post a picture of yourself holding a statement coffee mug, or maybe holding up a copy of a book that you have just purchased or won, or, you know, something else. And you can say, Hey, my name is Alan Nunez. And I'm, you know, maybe, you know, kind of announcing if you're not aware, I'm, I'm an experienced admissions recruiter. I'm looking for my next full-time position in college recruitment. And in my mug today is uh, coffee with hazelnut coffee creamer. What, what's in your mug? And it's more like conversational. I don't feel like Al is like pushing himself on me as a job seeker. And it is, it's a subtle reminder that you're looking for work and getting people into the conversation. Now this post, I said, if you comment on the post, I'm going to rub Pepper's belly and she loves belly rubs. And I got a couple of people commenting on the post as a regard, uh, as a result of that. So it was a really fun post, um, something different to do. And I want to encourage you, if you've never done like a, 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 a social post, so to speak, on LinkedIn, try doing one because you might draw some additional visibility to yourself, driving people back to your profile and hopefully leading you to find your next dream job. Um, Joey, I see your hand is raised and then we'll go to David. Yeah, I just wanted to elaborate hello? on what, I wanted to elaborate on what- um... Hello? Hello? Oh, uh, if you could, whoever's unmuted, please mute yourself. We heard somebody saying, hello, I'm hoping that's because they got an interview from a recruiter during the phone call. <laughs> Make sure you're muted if you could. Go ahead, Joey. I wanted to elaborate on what Randy was saying is that it's not enough just to post to say, it's not enough to say you're not looking for work. You should be posting because, because most people are on LinkedIn. And if you're talking about the position you're looking at, Randy, people who are looking for somebody like you will look at your profile as part of their background check, if you will. They want, they'll want to see that you've been posting, having nothing to do with looking for work. Just Get some posts out there, make yourself visible because they will look and they will check. That's all. That's all I had to say. 
All right. Thank you so much, Joy. Okay. I think we're going to finish off with David. We're going to do our mantra before we leave here today, if you can stick on for just a few more minutes. So David, did you have a question, a comment? How can we help you? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed over, not just recently, but over the years, I have a, quite a tendency to uh, second guess myself on just about everything in the job search. And do you have any suggestions on how I might reduce, if not eliminate, second guessing? So can you give me an example of, of what, what that is? Oh, geez. Like? Is it uh, I'm not good enough to apply for this job kind of a thing? Or I uh, there's, am, 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 I, am I sufficiently qualified to apply? Is my cover letter good enough? Uh, should I said this said it this way instead of that way? Okay, Joey's raising his hand. I'm gonna have Joey jump in because Joey, remember at the beginning he's like, "I'll knock you upside the head if you need to be knocked upside the head." So Joey, what what advice do you have for David? Here it comes. Yeah. Instead of instead of lamenting about what what you're lamenting about, David, mm -hmm. switch it around and say, "I wonder what would happen if I was the most qualified person for this position. I wonder if." I was best suited for this position. I wonder what can go right if I apply for this position. Because here's the thing. Now, this is not for you, David. This is for everybody. The person we speak to the most on a daily basis is ourselves. Ourselves, yeah. And the and the most and 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 most people and scientists will tell you this: the majority of those conversations are negative or negative based. Mm -hmm. It's human nature. Nobody can stop that. Only us, because nobody hears that. Only us. If we were three, this conversation doesn't count. But we're not three. We're adults. Mm -hmm. We have to be cognizant of the negative words and phrases and thoughts and ideas that meander into our brains. We have to stop ourselves. We are responsible. Nobody else. Not your parents, not your spouse. Nobody mm -hmm. on this call. We have to do that ourselves. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's simple. I'm just as guilty. I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. But you've got to nip that in the bud and switch it around and say to yourself, boy, wouldn't it be great if? I wonder if. It, it seems like there's always somebody with that extra course or that extra internship or that extra something or other. What if it was you, David? David, what if it was you? What if, I wish other it was people, me. what if other people who are applying for this position are thinking mm -hmm. the same exact thought that you're thinking? Right? Mm -hmm. If you're all thinking the same thought, somebody's got to rise above. I have a suggestion. Let it be you. And rise above. Okay. And what have you got to lose? If you don't get the job or you don't get the interview, you didn't have it when you started. So you didn't lose anything. Mm -hmm. What happens if you get the job or the interview? <laughs> the next call, you'll be on here saying, I can't be any more calls. I got a new job. That's good. All right, David, was that helpful for you? Yes. Do you have any comments yourself, Brenda? Uh, you know, when, when you start, you're saying you start playing the what if game, the, you know, like, like this is part, it kind of ties back to the mantra, which we're going to do here in a second. When you start to feel yourself thinking, maybe I'm not good enough and maybe I shouldn't have applied or maybe, I don't know, start to remind yourself, well, they asked you to interview for the job for a reason. So Part of it is when you're in a preliminary interview, you know, ask them the question, what was it about my experience or background that prompted you to reach out to me for this conversation? So getting a little bit, I think sometimes getting a little bit of that real feedback helps to feed into the brain. So the brain, you know, you're kind of dumping the, the positive on top of the negative stuff to push it out of there. So if you are getting calls, if you are getting interviews, there's a reason behind that. Um, so sometimes retraining your brain by using facts are going to help. And in the scenario of, you know, um, you, you had mentioned, is my cover letter good enough or things like get an accountability partner um, or find a career coach. There's many people that are amongst the all-star lineup that can help you with that. Or you can reach out to your college or university. It's often the career services department will offer that either free of charge or to people who are alumni. If you join the alumni association, Sometimes you can just put out asks, even within the VIP group, put out an ask within the VIP group. Would somebody be open to looking at my resume and giving me feedback? Could somebody look at my cover letter and let me know what you think? Could somebody look at my thank you note and tell me what you think? Put it out to the group, ask for permission, and then send it to them. Um, Jorge says, reach out to your local workforce department. So find people that you feel have good expertise that can help you within that. Um, but David, what you're facing is, I mean, every one of us, you know, goes through similar things. It's just like mm -hmm. finding strategies to work through it. 
Does that Thank help you. you? All right, great. Okay. So I'm going to do two things before we wrap up here today. I'm going to share my screen. And Julia, would you mind dropping in the link to that survey um, onto the, 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 the Zoom chat here? Um, I need to find it up on screen. So last week I talked about, I am kicking around this idea right now of doing some small group coaching. Um, I did see someone inside of chat saying, hey, can you look at my profile today? And sometimes we have time for, for the profile reviews. Um, other times we don't have as much time. And I was just thinking, is there another way that I can help all of you who are in career transition, who maybe want a little bit more of, of me, a, a more of like a one-on-one, -on -one, but at a more reasonable rate. So I'm, I'm evaluating some paths to doing some small group coaching. And I put together a survey, um, sent out an email last week I'll probably do a reminder on that, but Julia just dropped the link to the survey inside of chat. So if you could take a moment, just share with me your thoughts on that. Um, I can't do this for free guys, because I am self-employed. I need to keep my business running. I do these Friday calls every week for free. And by the way, you can get the Friday call on, on playback if you missed, and you can even watch them all for free there too. But if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer one-to-one -one services, but I also am evaluating doing small group coaching. And the feedback so far has been a little bit mixed. I've seen some people saying, yep, and here's, I, I'm putting some different price points and scenarios, number of attendees, number of sessions a month, things like that. I'm leaning right now towards doing it in a one-off um, type of a basis. So it might be sign up for this group of up to six or sign up for this group of up to 10, and you would pay per session to go through. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Um, that way you can come and you can pick which sessions, you know, how many sessions you'd like to do with me. I, I've also considered a cohort type of an approach where, you know, you buy like a month worth of program twice a month and it's the group, the same group of 10 people going through it. Uh, I'm just debating about where I go with it. So in the survey, there's some, some text blocks where you can share verbatim comments and feedbacks and things like that. Um, the calls will be recorded. You will get a playback. Everyone will get the hot seat. And that was one of the questions. Will I get one-on-one -on -one support? Yes, you will. But it won't be one-on-one. -on -one. It'll be me giving you coaching as other people are watching and listening in. So everyone in the group will have some time to get some one-on-one. -on -one, but the entire phone call, the entire hour call won't be just you. It'll be you in splitting the time amongst the others in there as well. So Surveys in there, if you could take a moment to reply, probably within the next couple of weeks, I'll be launching that, maybe sooner if I get um, some positive feedback. That's one thing. And then the last thing I want to do related to this whole topic of mindset, in the beginning of the call, we were talking about self-care. I want to do the mantra. Um, in addition to those two reasons, um, my kids are home today because it's a snow day. And I just heard my teenage son, whose room is right above me, he's moving around. So I want to be as loud as we can and wake him up. That's one of my goals too. <laughs> so um, we're going to do this mantra. And if you've never done this before, this is a job seeker mantra that I've created to keep us in the right mindset while we are in career transition. Um, I want to invite you right now to unmute yourself. So go to your mute button and unmute yourself if you could. If you want to participate actively, I would invite you to raise a hand. If you had your right hand last week, use your left hand this week. It's not legally binding. So don't feel too much pressure on which hand you need to use. I am going to say the line of the mind. I'm going to point at the screen and you're going to say it back to me. And I'm going to turn my volume up so that we wake up my son and he says, what the heck was going on down there? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say the line. I'm going to point at you. You're going to repeat it back to me and we're going to go through the mantra right now. So here we go. Ready? I'm going to say it and then repeat it after I point to you. This is temporary. This, this is, is temporary. temporary. There you go. I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit louder. I am awesome. I, I, am I am awesome. awesome. There you go. One more time because I really want to wake him up. I am awesome. I, I am, am awesome. awesome. All right, I'm hearing some. Noise. I am awesome. <laughs> I want you to point to someone else and say, and you are awesome. And you and are, you you are, are awesome. awesome. There you go. I am valuable. I am, I am valuable. valuable. I will find another job. I, I will find another, job. find another job. There you go. The black hole isn't the only way. The black, the black hole isn't the only way. The only way. I am in control of my future. I am in control of my future. And using LinkedIn can help to give me power. 
And using LinkedIn, LinkedIn can help to give you power. 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 Yes, it can. Plus, by attending today, I am a step ahead. All right, give yourself a round of applause on that. Yay. Thank you guys so much. Please put yourself back on mute if you don't mind so we don't get the background noise. Um, just a couple of things why we do this. I know we don't do this every week, but I do enjoy doing this because I think, first of all, it makes you smile, doesn't it? You feel a little bit goofy doing it, but then you get that sense of community when you hear other people saying the same things back. And hopefully this sticks in your brain and it kind of reverbs throughout the day, maybe throughout the weekend, throughout the month, whatever. And, and you remember these things when these situations happen, because at some point during your job search, you're going to think to yourself, oh, I'm never going to find another job, right? You're going to think that at some point. You're probably thinking it, maybe you thought about it today already. I want you to remember this is temporary. This is a blip in your history. This is just now. Someday you're going to look back and go, oh my gosh, what the heck just happened? I went through that whole thing, right? So this is just a blip. You will be back to work someday. I want you to know that and I want you to believe that. You are awesome and you are valuable. That's really important for you to remember that. I call this VIP job seeker office hours because you, my friend, are a very important person. Your value is not tied to whether or not you are employed or not. You are still a valuable person who has a lot of, of knowledge that you've gained over the years and passion about what you do. And there's going to be some lucky employer out there who's going to get you for an employee and you're going to be able to share that wisdom and passion with them. So I want you to remember that you are awesome and you are valuable. Right now you're just in between successes, right? You will find another job. And if you catch yourself saying, I'm never going to find another job, I want you to say out loud two times, I will find another job. I will find another job. You've got to retrain your brain to think about that's what's playing on the loop. Not I'm never going to find another job. Because if you say that, you're going to have a harder time finding a job. I'm going to be very blunt with you. If you say to yourself, I will find another job, your brain is going to start to believe it. And you're going to start to see opportunities. Things are going to start popping up. I'm not going to tell the boat story again, but you know what I'm talking about. The boats are going to come in and, and, and come to you. Never turn down an opportunity for a conversation. You only turn down job offers. Remember that too. Okay. Um, the black hole isn't the only way. And I talk about the black hole of job search. I am passionate about hating the black hole of job search, applying to job upon job upon job upon job and never hearing anything back. You can take control. Part of the reason or part of the path is doing that rather is going on LinkedIn and getting active, connecting with people, using a personalized invitation, posting on LinkedIn, asking, you know, including calls to action in your posts, like I did with my dog Pepper this morning. When you're going into the homepage, participating in conversations with other people, that's going to help to give you visibility, which is going to help to give you more power in your job search. And my friend, by attending today, you are a step ahead because we have had such a great time chatting with all of you here today. Hopefully you have made new um, connections during the call here. You've gained new resources. I hope I've made you smile. I hope I have inspired you here today as well. As we wrap up our phone call today, I want to thank the all-stars who are on helping me on the call here today. I see Christopher is still on. Joey is still on. I know some of the others had to drop off on the phone call, um, but I want to thank all of them. Make sure that you're connecting with them and please be sure to consider doing business with them or refer business to them. They come on here to donate their time and I want to help each of those individuals out. Thank you also to Julia for helping in the background and thank you to attending to all of you. Thank you to Alicia, Angela, Becky, David, David B, David M, Dean, Debbie, Gary, Janelle, Jean, Jeff, Jennifer, Jerry, Jorge, Juan, Katie, uh, Kelly, Carrie, Christine, Laura S, Laura, or Laura S, Lena, Mary Beth, Nancy, nice to see you again. Noel, Randy, Santina, nice to see you, my friend. Scott, Stuart. Vic, Wendy, and Mary. With that said, everyone, I'm going to stop the live stream on YouTube. I will keep this open for about five minutes so you can download the chat. Um, Christopher, if you would be so kind, can you remind us how to download the chat? And then I'm going to take myself off of camera. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful weekend. I look forward